Jarvis? Open mask. Here's eight tips for beautiful product videos. One of the first shots that I'm gonna do is a light reveal shot for the product. My client has a bunch of different types of products. The one that we're shooting for this is an SPF sunscreen. The idea with this is that we're gonna use light to reveal the product, but we're gonna do it in a unique way by using light and shadow. And it's kind of a play of sunscreen, right? First, you're gonna place your product in the center, and then you're gonna to wanna to get something that's kind of circular because that's gonna give a nice arc to these. And you're gonna to wanna to find something similar to these. These are, again, camera rods but you can use anything that is all the same size. If you go wider, it's gonna be a bigger shadow, and if you go thinner, it's gonna be a smaller shadow. After you get the circle, you're gonna mark down with even spacing in between these, so it creates this perfect spacing of those shadows. After that, it's really that simple as you're gonna put your camera. I have my Canon R5 with a 100 millimeter macro pointing straight down. We have everything faced exactly how we need it. And then you can take any kind of hard source light like this. You're gonna take two lights your key light, and then you're gonna create, with this light, you're gonna just move it back and forth, the hard source light, and it's gonna create the shadow going across this. And when you move it, that's gonna create your movement in the shot just with the light. And in post, you can probably do a zoom that looks like this. We are on to our second beauty shot. What we are trying to get is we're trying to get all the products, but they're actually underneath the water to create this ripple effect without them having any droplets or dirtiness on them. But it also creates this really cool shadow look because of raising the water up, when we go like this and we shoot uh, light directly at it, it creates these shadows onto the bottom right down here. It's all about the angle of your camera is the inverse of the angle of the light to create that like reflecting look. But instead, so we don't have the light just blinding out and blowing out the shot, we have it a little bit lower, but you wanna be very uh, specific where your hard light is. You're gonna have to play with that a little bit because that's what's gonna create that shadow and that reflecting look. If we remove that light and just have these soft lights in there, it's not gonna create that look. Unfortunately and inversely, it does create a hard light onto your product here. This is just a tray that I bought on Amazon for very cheap. Don't build your own, I've tried, it's terrible. The only problem is they do have holes right here. So we use some Flex Seal. Flex Seal. I'll put a link for you guys to buy this because this is working much better than the one I built that was leaking a lot of, a lot of water. It was a lot more expensive. This is like 20 bucks. So Flex Seal. Tip for when shooting with water, because when shooting with water, you're inevitably get stuff into the water and it's gonna show up on the camera. Just take a paper towel like this and kind of use it as a filter and just drag it across like so. And then you can flip it to the other side. It just helps kind of clean up and capture anything on the top of the water. What we're doing now is a really cool, unique reveal shot. What you're gonna need for this is a motorized slider. I'm using the one by Xebo because it's the most accurate accurate slider I've used. It's also crazy fast. The way that it works is we're gonna do this shot twice. First, we're gonna have our full products in here, this one and this one. We're gonna focus, when they're both in here, on the back products. We're gonna run it like this, and it's gonna go from side to side really fast. That's why this thing is dope, and then it's gonna go back like that. And we're just focusing on this. In the real time, we're actually doing this much slower. I'm just showing you guys, for example, then what we're gonna do is take all of this, remove it out of the shot, and then focus just on this. So what it will look like is it's gonna start on this product, fully in focus, and as it moves, we're gonna reveal this, and this is also gonna be fully in focus. And the reason why we're doing it focused twice is because otherwise this is gonna be super blurry in the background, which ruins the whole point. It's called forced perspective. And they're gonna look like they're both perfectly in focus, and it's gonna magically reveal like this. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Core, and their new battery, the Nano X. I've been using the Nano X for a while now to power my Ursa Pro G2. I love how long the battery lasts, I love that it's lightweight, and most importantly, how durable it is. Some other cool features that has a unique LED display and uses wraparound LEDs to display the battery power percentage from a distance. It also has a P-tap and USB connections so you can power your focus motor or charge your cell phone. When powering your camera or lights, 
You want something that's gonna be reliable. It's that simple. Core's been in this business for a while now and they know exactly what they're doing when it comes to batteries. And then Nano X is living proof of that. So go check it out. Another day, another shot. Today is day two of filming. And what we're doing today is filming our group light reveal. And you may have seen this in my fellow commercial that I did or how to make a copy commercial. And what this essentially is, is just taking your light and using it as an action to motivate some intrigue in a mystery reveal. And the most important thing to do is, first off, you're gonna set up all your lights. You got your key, fill, and background light. Your background light's gonna be your most important because what that's gonna do once I turn off these two lights and don't mind the BTS light is create a silhouette of your product itself. Right now the camera only sees a black image shaped outline of the product. And the way you get that is because you need to have something that's lit behind it to create a silhouette. We first do our shot where we move the camera and all we do is we're using our slider. This is by Xebo. I'm on the Canon 100 millimeter macro lens and what it's gonna do is push in. After we get that shot, the silhouette shot, then we move on and we turn on our fill light like this and we do the shot again, but we use something like this instead of just turning it on so it's not just a boom. We use something like this that's gonna block the entire light and we slowly go like this to reveal the light onto it. After we do that, then we just go back one more time to our key light, turn on the key light, and we do the same thing one more time, reveals, light comes onto it, right? And you wanna use something like duvetine, muslin, something that's gonna be big that's gonna cover it. Ideally black, because if you use white, it's gonna bounce everywhere. And then we're using a slight rock right here with our products that we've staged specifically for the way that our client wants. This takes a lot of time to balance them out. Alex was spending a lot of time as I'm looking in the camera at all the lines make sure everything's straight, everything's perfect, because you want it to make it look perfect for product shots. At the end, you blend all those three shots together and it gives you something that looks like this. We are now doing our next shot, which is a hero landing shot. And this is actually very cool because this is a great reveal or introduction to your product and makes your product look very powerful. And the way we're doing this is, I'm doing a little bit more complicated. You can do this by hand. It takes a little bit more practice, but I'm using motorized, a motorized slider with another motorized slider. We're using the Edelkrone one right here with the head one, and that's allowing me to control the product. And you can think of it as like a product mover. What it's doing is gonna lower the product like this and then make it land onto this rock. And at the same time, the camera is supposed to push in and then focus onto the product. So it's tracking the product landing onto the rock, which is a very cool introduction shot. The way that we did this is we have the slider on a motorized thing right here then the head one, and then I have a knuckle, um, a C-stand knuckle adapter to a female, to a metal straw that I cut and flattened because we didn't want to drill a hole into this hard plastic. And then I flattened that so that it's kind of like a spatula surface. And then on the back, cardboard with double-sided tape. Really, when you guys are rigging things and trying to do these shots, you just have to be creative and think outside the box and really think about like, okay, how is this gonna make this movement? You imagine the shot and then you find things around the house. Obviously, this is a little bit more complicated. When I first started, I literally just used a drill. And if I was gonna do this by hand, I literally just have a drill and just lower it down like this. If I wanna do it by hand, it's gonna take a little bit more practice, but this is a lot more accurate. And then boom, in post, you can do something like this. We are on to our next shot, and this is a dropper tracking shot. And what I mean by tracking is, tracking is just where the camera is following the object in the same motion that the object is moving on camera. So for example, we are gonna be following a droplet coming out of this right here, right on into the bottle right here. We have the bottle on a white acrylic box, and it's a hero shot. So we're below the bottle pointing up, and then we built this because we need to have the dropper steady and it needs to be in the same place each time. I'm just using a bunch of grip parts that I have. Like these are all for C-stands. I don't know where I got this. It's some kind of focus rod. This is small rig clamp. Just anything I can to make sure that I have this all set up. I'm shooting on the Ursa Pro G2 at 300 frames. It's an old camera, but it still does the trick. And all we're doing is using the Xebo with the motorized thing where I set two points. So it's tilting up like this. I go for the drop at 300 frames and tilt down as it's dropping in. And it turns out something like this. We have moved on to our water 
world shots. And what I mean by that is I'm just making up things. So now what we're doing is we're doing a bunch of different kind of water techniques. And you have to get really creative with this because throwing water, splashing water, pouring water, using different types of things will give different effects to the camera. So you have to play around with it, see what works, see what plays well on camera with the product that you're using. Right now we have the base layer and we're just putting on a block of acrylic like we did before, but now we twist it to the side, have it a bit higher. So it's giving this like very grand S look. I punched a bunch of holes into this plastic right here to create a rain effect like this right over the product. And I hold it. I did in slow motion when the splashing, splash, 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 looks pretty damn cool. shot this is called the wave and what it is is that we're taking this thin piece of plastic that goes like this and you just bend it you take some clamps in your c-stand and to make kind of like a half circle then you take anything that's going to hold water your water container and you're going to throw the water come like this and create this really cool wave clean feel product we have our key light shooting through right here and then we have our other light our fill light coming in right here with the fusion and it's simple and it looks like this That is it for how to create a beauty commercial. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and until next time.